Hello everyone, how are you? Welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be walking you through my rendering process. So right now I'm adding some gradients to my flat colors just to give them more of a depth. Uh, this is where I'll usually add the blush of the cheeks. Just, there's no rhyme or reason to this. I just think it looks better overall. If you notice in the corner, I have made my own color palette. And the way that I do this is I take a base layer, usually a pink or purple, and then I add a clipping mask on top of that and lower the opacity to about 60 to 85% and just lay the colors on top of them and they make a really cohesive palette at the end. Now I'm starting to render the eyes. I'll shade them with a multiply layer and clipping mask. Usually I just build up a gradient and add some darker colors on the middle inside and then on the outside ring. Then I'll go with a overlay layer and add some light to the bottom. Just play around with it a bit. There's not really a certain way to do it. It just whatever looks nice, I think. <laughs> it may be a little chaotic, but it all turns out good in the end, right? And that's all that matters. Now I'm adding a little catch slide of almost a window. I do that in almost all my drawings, despite the fact that they're not looking out of a window. <laughs> all the brushes that I'm using, you can find them on my Patreon or my Gumroad. They're free. Um, I made them myself. I only use three brushes. A flat pen for line art, a softer pencil for rendering, and then an airbrush for gradients. But now I'm going and shading the skin with this pinkish color on a multiply layer. Um, if you notice, the light is coming from the right top. That's why all of the darker shadows are on her left. I feel like beginner artists struggle with light sources. And the best way I can describe it is using puzzle piece technique. <laughs> Say you have a puzzle piece. It's every part of the puzzle that faces one way you shade and then the opposite way you shade the other. I think in Photoshop it's called the bevel technique. Anyways that's how I learned how to draw light sources. <laughs> Now, the way I shade hair is really chaotic. I don't go by the, I know I just talked about the light source, but I do not go by a light source. Mostly I'll do a darker layer where I'm going to add the shine of her hair. And then I'll go and add some thick streaks with my rendering pencil. And then after that, I will Take it and add some smaller, more detailed lines or build it up with some darker shadows. But like I said, I don't really have a process. Um, it's just whatever feels right, I do it. Also, if you notice, I am zooming really far in on this. I don't recommend that. It's just my iPad is really small compared to what I was used to drawing on. So I've been zooming in <laughs> in order to compensate for the size difference. Um, but I don't recommend zooming in more than 100% because any more than that, it's really just, you know, irrelevant details that you're gonna be changing, so. Now I'm adding the shine of her hair. If you notice, I only ended a layer where I made the light more apparent in her hair by doing a lighter color 
on this side and a darker layer down here. I'll just add a bunch of bubbles and build those up for the actual shine on her hair and then go back and add a couple little highlights throughout her hair to make it look like the light's hitting it and plus just give it more depth. In the end it is chaotic like I said but I think it looks good so that's all that matters. And now I'm just adding some colors just to make it look cool. I don't know why I did that but I did. Um, and if you notice, I am collapsing all of my rendered layers onto the flat layer. I don't normally do this, but I plan on using a gradient map on this specific drawing and adding some effects afterwards. So I'm going to have to condense down all of the work anyways into one piece. So I'm just going to doing that now so I don't have to do it later. So the reason I drew this drawing is because I wanted to practice drawing the ab muscles and you know the sailor scouts have a very tight fitting shirt and so it would accentuate those muscles but yeah this drawing was mainly to focus on shading ab muscles um, I just built up the shadows with a few multiply layers and then did some overlay and hard lot layers on top of that to build up the highlights. In the end I think it turned out pretty good but I was heavily referencing this picture side of it so you can tell me in the comments how you think I did. This piece it felt like it took me no time to draw but by the time I finished it it took me almost five hours to complete this drawing. But it only felt like two tops. My rendering process takes a lot of time, but I feel like the most time consuming is my line art because I like it to be very pristine and perfect and then I'll go over it with a sensitive brush to add some weight and then I'll do some hatching within the harsher shadows. I didn't have enough editing power on my iPad to do the full speed paint so I was only do, able to do the rendering process but be sure to like and subscribe so that I know whether or not you would like to see a, a speed paint of my line art. I think the question I get asked most is one specifically what brushes I use and two I get a lot of comments on my line art so now this jewel on her bow I shaded it really similar to how I shaded the eyes and later on in the video I go back and add more but yeah it's basically the same process I did on the eye just simplified because I wanted to give it a really nice shine almost like a crystal rather than a button now I feel like the bow is what I had the most trouble with I wanted it to be a satin material and I wasn't sure how to render that. Even more so, I was having a hard time rendering the shape of it to make it look like the fabric was folding in the way that the bow was. But overall, I think I did a good job, but it was the most challenging for this piece. I also had a lot of fun with the crown. Now, this jewel up here, I did the same process as the other jewel in the eyes, just to give it a really cohesive look to make the two jewels look really similar. But like I said, I had a lot of fun rendering this tiara of hers because I never really got to work with metals before, so I wasn't sure how to render them. And this was more or less just random. I just put down random colors what I thought would look good and I think it turned out pretty okay. Now for my line art I will fill the original layer a solid color and go and add a lot of color with a lot hit. I will do some extra shading on the eyes. And then around the face make those lines look a little more fleshy. Right here I'm just adding a nice 
gradient to the background to make it look more dynamic and give it more depth. And I'm playing around with the colors just to see what looks best. And now I am condensing down all of these layers so that I can start on the effects that I wanted to add to this piece. I also did a multiply layer to add a little bit of rim lock because the lights would bounce off and bend around and hit the other side of her body. So I added that. And now I am adding uh, a gradient mat just to make everything look very cohesive and solid. I also add some noise and uh, chromatic, I don't know how to say it, abbreviation. <laughs> I always call it chromatic abbreviation, but I know that's not, not right. Um, lastly, the most important thing is I sign it. And I am very indecisive about my signature. I'll sign it about 10 times. And that's the finished piece. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I want to give a special shout out to my patrons, Rattle the Second and Fat Wombat. See you next time.